Starting from Rutherford's famous experiment, particle scattering processes have been crucial for understanding the basic laws of physics. When David Kossauer, Lance Dixon, and I started thinking about scattering amplitudes, it seemed to most people that all the important ideas had already been worked out in the 1950s and 1960s, and the topic was not of much interest. But the three of us had a different viewpoint inspired by various results, also involving other people. Mostly we were guided by the novel structures involving interactions of arbitrary numbers of particles. We convinced ourselves that no matter how much progress we had made, that in fact, we had only scratched the surface and that scattering amplitudes are really wondrous with many new structures and hidden symmetries awaiting discovery. More importantly, we felt that these structures would be useful for explicit calculations of physical interest. The path to convincing the community that there was something deep and interesting in scattering amplitudes was not an easy one. We finally accomplished this the old-fashioned way by systematically producing new and sometimes rather surprising results in a variety of directions, some of which really caught the attention of the community. This included precision calculations useful for the Large Hadron Collider at CERN, results at high orders of perturbation theory for supersymmetric theories whose scattering amplitudes turned out to be enormously beautiful with a rich structure involving many new hidden symmetries. It also gave us a nice way to think about gravity in the context of perturbation theory in a way unified with the other forces, starting from the idea that gravitons are massless spin tube particles as advocated by the great physicist Richard Feynman. We applied this to basic questions about supergravity theories and our most recent applications of these ideas is to precision calculations of gravitational wave emission from binary black holes. A key reason for our success is that once scattering amplitudes gained some notice, it became much easier to attract many smart and talented young people to join the adventure. When we started, you could fit everyone interested in the subject in a small broom closet. These days, the problem is to find lecture halls large enough for the conferences and workshops. The conferences are now chock full of energetic and talented young people eagerly discussing the latest advances or proudly showing some beautiful new result. I always marvel at the fact that we are no longer the only ones who find joy in studying scattering amplitudes. Judging from the enthusiasm and talent of the young people, some of whom I have the pleasure of working with, I am quite sure that many new wondrous discoveries await us in the future. As a message to young people, sometimes you just need to have faith that great discoveries await, even if the path is difficult. When we were young, we didn't fully appreciate various difficulties, which our senior colleagues were happy to tell us about, explaining this problem or that problem. But sometimes it is best to just ignore the naysayers and instead focus on the possibilities. If you have a novel path that can lead to new results, great intellectual rewards await despite the difficulties. I also want to express how grateful I am that society is willing to fund our scientific adventures when we promise nothing in return other than continuing on the path started by Galileo to understand the fundamental laws governing our universe. Besides the government funding agencies and society as a whole, I want to add that individuals can make a huge difference. In particular, I want to thank Monty L. Baumick for funding our institute at UCLA and for his vision and understanding the importance of fundamental science. Asking for nothing in return other than to share our joy in whatever discoveries we make.